The splendid work of a Monster Maid Volume 2 review. Back in January, Yen Press released Volume 1 of the splendid work of a Monster Maid. The series introduced us to Nekomata Protagonist Somere and the team of highly skilled maids she ends up working with. Now it's time to find out if Volume 2 offers a similarly entertaining read as a series debut. At the end of Volume 1, we saw the undead, undead Rose got captured by a mad doctor the group were investigated. investigating. The doctor is obsessed with life and death. So having an undead in his hands gets him excited about the prospect of dissecting her to see how she ticks. Now it's a great it's a race against time for Summer and Android Ivy to rescue their companion before any harm can befall her. The nice thing about this opening chapter is that we got to say Summer and Ivy carry out a mission without Rose to rely on, which I think is important given volume one the show that we quite clumsy. It's not that they're unreliable since they're both powerful in their own right. It's just as Rose is the one who can get the best out of them. So it's interesting to see how they work together when left to their own devices. After they defeated the Doctor, the series resumes a largely episodic structure we saw in the first book. This includes a story about Siren the girls end up helping with going out to dinner together and a housekeeping mission that Sumeri and the boss embark on together leaving Rose and Ivy behind for maintenance. The final chapter of the four including here is the most interesting in terms of the future of the series, since it introduces a rival group of maids who are working for the current Demon King, having learned about Sumire and the, and the Crucium, the mystic staffing agency, they said that the investigator put a stop to our heroes who are going around collecting the former Demon King's magic, that we have a defined group of enemies, I think the episodic nature of the manga would change and perhaps would get some longer storylines as, as friend and foe face off, face off against one another. At least I hope that's the case. I certainly enjoy both volumes of the most splendid mark of a monster made so far, but it's perhaps telling that my favorite storyline is the one about the Doctor, which is spread across two chapters. The other thing I appreciate about this installment is that they managed to give us character development for both Rose and the boss. It's a shame that they also extend to Ivy, but if of the main cast, I think Rose and their boss are the two that hold the most secrets, so it's hard to complain too much. Their development and backstories are expertly woven into the chapters. Speaking to the skill of author Yugata Tanabe, who manages to cram a lot into these tales but not overwhelm the reader, the artwork too remains wonderful and beautifully conveys the world our cast lives in. As previously mentioned, the Mosmendi work on the Monster Bay Volume 2 comes to the West thanks to Yen Press and continues to be translated by Eleanor, Eleanor Summers. The translation reads well with no issues to note as with the previous release, this one includes a color page at the beginning. Interestingly, it has been announced that the series will be ending in Japan next month. Which means it's like a wrap on a volume 5. It seems like a pretty good line for it. Give you what they see in the story so far. Yen Press, Yen has volume 3 scheduled for an English release in July. Overall, the splendid work of the Monster Movie Volume 2 builds on the foundation where the first entry presents an entertaining read. With so much needed character development giving an end, interesting game change of food. Going into volume 3, the future in the series is bright. 8 over 10.